So here I am adding the snake skin to my very hot lye solution. You can see I've labeled my lye and I'm showing the difference between the silk and the snake skin. Grabbing my spatula, again, that's just silk. Here is the snake skin. And I'm just gonna mix this in. It does completely melt um, and I end up draining it off later on, which I'll show you in the main video. Um, but I figured I would show this part because it's kind of cool. But yeah, it totally melts down and it acts just kind of like silk. So, ta-da, snakeskin. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Whitney. I'm not really sure who else it would be if you're watching this, but I mean, today I'm still Whitney. Um, and today we're doing something a little different. Um, I have, um, I've prepped some lye solution with snakeskin. And in the beginning of this video, I showed you guys um, how I melted it down. It wasn't very exciting. It's just like adding silk or any other keratin to the um, to the lye solution. I've since strained it, um, and I am going to make some soap with it today. So I had seen a video um, by a really talented maker. I, I don't know her actual name. Her her YouTube name is Oh My Cattles. Uh, which always cracks me up because I, I don't know why she chose the name, but like, I mean, I don't know. The words oh my and cattle just are a really funny juxtaposition. So anyway, so she has made this video of this, this fish scale technique. And I, I wanted to make, I wanted to make a soap with it. I've done a couple tries for a challenge and I had to cut it the wrong way in order to make the challenge work because of the nature of the challenge. But this time I'm gonna do it the way that she does it and hopefully um, get a cool pattern. So I've chosen to use the same colors I just used for my, uh, my kiss technique, my dragon kiss, um, which is, this is, um, oh, what's the name of it? Full Throttle? Full Throttle from Nurture Soap, a little bit of titanium dioxide. This is orange red neon. Deep orange neon, sorry. Um, also from Nurture Soap. This is deep orange neon and a little bit of red trial by fire. This is trial by fire. And this is activated charcoal and a dash of black oxide for effect. Um, so she uses cups in hers and I, I don't know if I wanna use cups in mine. I, I got them here um, and I think, I think that I will use them. Um, these are 10 ounce cups. Um, so I'm going to mix, make a mess. I'm going to mix these colorants in my little pouring pitchers and I'm going to put them in here, um, to actually pour in. And that's just because there's so many of them and I think that should work. So we'll try, we'll give it a go. We'll see what happens. Um, no promises that it's going to come out cool. Um, you guys may never see this video if it doesn't, but hopefully it will. So, uh, let's make some soap. So I've got... Um, my cooled oils. This is actually a different recipe that I normally use. I'm doing um, a bunch of things I always say not to do, which I'm doing like 10 new things at once, right? I've got, um, this has got some grapeseed oil in it, which I'm trying to incorporate into my recipe. And then of course we've got our lye solution here with our snake skin. Um, so let's go ahead and add. Um, and there is quite a bit of water, extra water than normal in here. And that is just because I, it's, I don't know, it's like a weird, like muddy color. And I wanted to make sure that there was enough water to dispel the snake skin. Cause I don't usually use that much silk and it was quite a large shed. Um, we live on a farm in case you guys didn't know that. And um, of course on farms, there's rodents and small creatures. And when those small creatures are snakes. So that's, that's where it came from. That's where we got it. So that's my goat milk going in. Um, hold on one second. Let me get, I just realized I didn't grab my other spatula. All right, I got my spatula, sorry. I get off screen. So I'm only gonna blend this to emulsion because I've got quite a bit of, um, odd things I need this to do for me today, right? Um, and so I've purposefully used a fragrance oil that I know deaccelerates. Um, it's actually a combination of two that deaccelerate, which is pink grapefruit from WSP and um, peppermint essential oil. So now that that's 
together. Let's go ahead and get it into our cups. Move this out of the way. I'll explain those marks in just a second, I promise. All right. Go ahead and mix this in, because unlike Unlike previous issues with me putting in fragrance oils ahead of time, looking at you, Ate the Notion, I know this one behaves well, so I'm not going to worry about it. So, give it another good stir. And let's go ahead and get all these measured out. So this technique is sort of like a dancing funnel. Um, and what makes it interesting is that it... Um, it depends on overlapping. It's like a weird combination of a clamshell pour um, where you count how long you're pouring it from what I can see and a, um, and a dancing funnel. So hopefully I wasn't too ambitious with trying to do this with five colors again, but we will see if the soap gods shall smile upon me this very sunny, lovely day. I'm not sure how that will look on my screen. I actually don't normally soap during the day. I usually soap in the evenings because I work. And like all of you work, I'm sure, or most of you work. I think we all work at something. Even if it's just getting off the couch, it's a job. Um, so I, I'm not 100% certain about this light we've got going here, but... Nevertheless, we shall persist. So we'll get our colorants mixed in and we'll start pouring. So when I watched this video the first time, I was blown away. I was just like, how did she get that, that really cool pattern? And a lot of it has to do with how you cut it. And a lot of it has to do with how you pour it. Now, have you, if you haven't seen my wood grain technique videos yet, um, before you try to attempt this and cutting this, I would strongly recommend you watch that because that's, that's the key to this particular pour, in my opinion. Um, we'll see, we'll see how right I am at the end. Um, but that's, that's what I think really the magic will happen with is getting, getting the cut right. Um, because just like the wood grain, it's, it's all in how you cut it, right? It's like a good ombre. You don't cut a good ombre the way you would cut a normal loaf. You cut that one like from the side out. Um, or, you know, a wood grain you cut from top down. So, you know, so much of, of perception and soap making is, you know, which way the fluids go, the soap goes, and therefore which way it will end up. And that's something that, you know, I think a lot of newer soap makers maybe don't totally have explained to them sometimes is, you know, that there is there's so much to do with, you know, not just how you pour, but how you cut. And it makes a difference. Um, and I see a lot of people talk about, you know, okay, well, smoothness and how to reduce bubbles. But, you know, a lot of my designs and, and things depend on thinking a little differently. Thinking in 3D is what I call it. But I'm sure there's a better name for it from somebody that's got a lot more letters behind their name than I do. Um, but it goes... It's worth, worth a nod here to it. So I'm just mixing all the rest of my color. Um, I get a lot of questions on how I have such bright colors. Um, I am a little bit of a maverick and I like that word maverick. Um, and it's, <laughs> uh, I hate admitting stuff like this on the, on, on the internet, on the YouTubes. Um, I, I don't tend to totally measure just by what the common usage rate is. Um, unlike, um, you know, using bath bombs or um, lotions or things like that that are staying on your skin, soap is a wash off product. So if I use slightly more than the recommended usage rate um, to make sure I get the color I need, especially because my batter is so yellow naturally, um, that I sometimes have to overcome that because I have so much, you know, uh, shea butter and so much cocoa butter 
in my recipe and I don't want to give that up. I like the way that makes my soap feel on my skin. It's a nice recipe. So I, I have to fight it. Um, and I fight it by using more. That's really the, that's the secret. It's not really a secret, but here we go. So now we've got all those guys there. So now let's grab our mold. And so she tilts hers. I, do I have my critter? I don't have my critter. I'm going to use a very fancy washcloth. Um, I have a Cheshire Cat Angler tool from Custom Craft Tools, and I love it. It's a very, very, very cool tool, but can you guys see that there? Move this up. Make sure you can see and I can see. All right. Yeah, you guys can see. Um, but my only problem is it takes up a lot of space, and when I'm doing something like this, I don't want, I don't want all my space taken up. So I'm just going to give this another good stir. It's still nice and, nice and fluid. Um, which is great. That's that's the beauty of a truly deaccelerating fragrance oil. And I'm just gonna pour about that much in. Not not all of it, but a good amount. And same with you. And I probably could have done this immediately in the cups and saved myself some dishes. But the only problem is I didn't want to make a mess. And despite what my videos look like. I don't actually like making messes. It's just like a happenstance existence of mine. Um, so I didn't think I could fit all of the soap in there, obviously, and, you know, get the color right. So that's why we're doing it this way. Although I really do like soaping with cups because there's a lot to be said for um, how easy the cleanup is. <laughs> no dishes it's just you know scrape them out really good and um, I have a compost pile so things like this um, they will they will decompose these cups aren't wax lined which um, that's a problem because if you're not careful they will uh, um, the leak through the outside of it but it makes a difference in the end I try not to be wasteful if I can avoid it and I'm not sure how well you guys can see that, but like my orange and my trial by fire did speed up a little bit. I don't hear people talk about this a whole bunch, but micas absolutely can change trace and change how they behave in certain fragrances. Um, and activated charcoal does this to me. It speeds up, like it's a little thicker than its friends. Um, so just something to be aware of. Hopefully I can be quick enough that it's not gonna matter. So we shall see. All right, so now we've got all that poured. Let's do our scales. So the long ones are the ones I'm gonna start off on. She makes a cute little pouring spout. And I'm just gonna count. One, two. One, two. One, two. She's much cleaner than me. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. All right, so I'm measuring, this is my high fangled measuring system, about how long a bar is. Here. So 
So all I'm gonna do is just cut this in the length of what would be two bars. I don't cut the bar I'm using to measure. Okay, so there's block one. And then we do the same thing again. Here's block two. So now this is what the inside looks like, which is cool, but not, not what I was hoping for. So we're going to see, I'm not sure if I actually did this right. Um, but we'll, we'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this the way it needs to go. Get this guy back in if I can. A lot easier to get it off than in sometimes. Mm -hmm. 